Good morning and welcome to Weekends with Whitney. Coming up in this morning show, could it be the holidays without Bergeron pecans? Most people around here and even in other states say absolutely not. We're going to take you behind the scenes of Bergeron pecans and find out why they are the biggest sheller in all of Louisiana and what makes their pecans, as many say, better than anyone else's. Also on this morning show, I'll whip up a delicious holiday treat. Here's a clue. It's made with badger on pecans, the great pumpkin, and Mark. And if you're going out of town for the holidays or having people in, I'll show you dreamy, exotic, new places to spend the night around town or around the world. And look what's back in Baton Rouge for another visit, the White Pelicans. We have some beautiful shots to share with you. But we begin with the most famous and popular nut in all of Louisiana, and we're not talking politics. These are Elliott pecans. These and the natives are some of the best around. And many say it just wouldn't be the holidays without Bergeron pecans to make all of your favorite candies, to make your favorite yam casserole, and much, much more. So this morning we're going to take you behind the scenes to see how they do it. some of the finest, most delicious pecans in the world. They're shelled here at Bajeron Pecans in New Roads. It's the largest operation in Louisiana. Andre Bajeron says production is down, a crushing 90% this year. I think the state last year made about 20 million pounds of pecans. This year, it'll be two or three million, if we're lucky. All the rain we had in the spring was devastating to pecan trees. It knocked many of the buds off. What did survive, then had trouble pollinating. On a good year, a great old pecan tree like this one that's 100 years old could produce five to 800 pounds of pecans. But this year, because of the wet spring that we've had, it will only produce 50 to 100. Nothing even sounds the same in this orchard. You'd be boom, boom, you know, you'd be hearing them. The ground would be, you know, just like you're walking on gravel. Charlotte Walsh drove all the way from Macomb, Mississippi to get hers. You can always depend on them being the best. They're the best for a lot of reasons. One is the rich soil here in Point Capi Parish. The main channel of the Mississippi River ran through here until the 1700s. When you have rivers, you go see a lot of native pecan trees. I guess with the floods over the, you know, the hundreds of years or whatever. And uh, Point Capisa was the number one producing uh, pecan production parish in the state. That's how the Bajorans got into the pecan business 105 years ago. This same building was Horace Bajoran's general store, Andre's grandfather. The pecans around here were so good and in such demand, he'd pay families to shell them at night to supply a store. He'd buy the pecans, get the pecans, and send it to the households at night. There's no TV or nothing, so the families at night would crack and shell pecans, and he'd pay them so much a pound to do it. And he'd pack them up and bring them to the railroad depot and send them off to New Orleans, Chicago, wherever. A century later, they're still shipping pecans to New Orleans. Aunt Sally's will only use Bajoran pecans in their world-famous pralines. They have tens of thousands of other customers in the other 49 states. That growth started after World War II, when the second generation of Bajorans came on board. My, my father and my uncle came back there after World War II. They both uh, came back and, and they started and the business started to expand. And we got to with the mechanicalized it, uh, you know, with, with the crackers and, and shellers and, and whatever and putting in cold storage facilities. And, and it just kind of grew, grew from there, you know, just slowly, slow progression. Andre, his brother Steve, and cousin Lester are the third generation now running the company. So what made you get in the business? I grew up in it, that's all I know. You know, I've been here all my life. Together they've raised the bar and taken the company global. They've also thrown in a dash of Hollywood. Lester and Steve were chosen to star in a Quaker Oats nationwide TV commercial when it first added pecans. To add supply to the growing demand, the Bajorans buy pecans from select Louisiana growers, all the way from Natchitoches to Abbeville. Back when we buy all over the state, you know, 
What we produce here is not enough to supply us. Production is much more entailed than I ever expected. It'll take two days for a pecan to go from this to this. Here's why in a nutshell. They arrive in 150 pound burlap sacks or these 1,500 pound super sacks I'm standing next to. The pecans are then dumped into this large metal container and hoisted into the sizer. Every pecan will fall into one of eight sizes and fall into the corresponding barrel. On the far left, fall the largest. Then they'll go into a cold water sanitizing bath. Next is another bath, but this one is 190 degrees to condition the shell. They'll begin to dry here with vibration and aeration. After drying, it's time to get cracking. This is an old cracker, but Andre says it's still a fine nutcracker. Then it's on to the shellers. That starts the long and layered process to free the meat from the shell. The pecan pieces are now sized and separated. Here, size is everything. See all of the shell still stuck to the meat? To separate them with the least damage, they get another water bath in this floater. Screens and vibration help release any meat left. After that, the pecans are sized again, shot into barrels according to size, then put on dryers. Removing water is essential. Otherwise, excess moisture will turn the pecans rancid once packaged. Here the process goes high tech with computers, electronic eyes, and more than 50 lasers inside. These series of machines will sort the pecan halves and pieces according to size. They're ejected with such speed and force, it's impressive they don't just fall to pieces. It used to take 30 people three times as long to do what these lasers and electronic eyes do. As a safety precaution, the pecans are then run through a metal detector to ensure no shards of metal or machinery end up in anyone's mouth. So you see if they have anything in there, that belt will stop. Finally, human eyes do the final pecan inspection in this 48-hour process. They then pack them into 30-pound boxes for commercial use or send them to another room here to be packaged into cellophane bags for consumers. Andre says he's seen incredible advances in production in the last 50 years, but says there's one thing new technology can't do, control Mother Nature. In the past 20 years, hurricanes like Gustav, Andrew, and Katrina have taken out 50% of the trees in this orchard just piles of debris after some of those took months to clear up. Total devastation. I mean, we had trees down everywhere. It bring tears to your eyes to see it. Because, like, this was 100 years old. Right, yeah. And what do you do? I mean... It, you can't it, replace a 100-year-old tree. Can't do it, didn't it? It was, you know, pretty bad, pretty bad over here. Before, this 400-acre orchard was lined with pecan trees, just one after the other. To regenerate, they planted 300 pecan seedlings. But 14 years later, they're just now producing a few pecans. You just have to take it like it comes. And whatever comes, customers will keep coming too. For this morning's Sunday Sizzle, we thought it would be fun to do something with Bajoran pecans. So I found what is a delicious recipe, three of fall's favorites. You have pecans, pumpkin, and bourbon. So it's a pie. And it may be something you want to add for your Thanksgiving or Christmas this year. It is really delicious. I've made it. I loved it. And I hope you will too. And it's easy. The best part. Well, delicious is the best part, but it's close. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with three lightly beaten eggs, three-fourths a cup of packed light brown sugar. Here comes the three tablespoons of bourbon. You're going to take a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon of ginger, which that ingredient kind of uh, surprised me, powdered ginger, by the way, and a fourth of a spoon of salt. And then we're gonna take one and a half cups of half and half. And 
16 ounces of canned pumpkin. We're gonna mix this up. And once it's all nice and mixed, you're just gonna pour it into your nine inch pie shell. Now, just because sometimes I'm not the most graceful person, I'm going to ladle mine in like this. Now we're gonna cook this in a 425 degree oven. Then we're gonna lower the temperature down to 350 degrees for 45 minutes. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes and we're gonna lower it now to 350 and it's going to cook for 45 minutes. How can you lose the light so much brighter there? You can't forget all your troubles, forget all your cares, so go downtown. Things will be great. It's ready! Now, you're probably wondering, like, so where are the pecans, Whitney, right? Well, this recipe is a little different. It doesn't bake in the pie itself. It is going to be part of the topping. So, we'll take two tablespoons of butter, and then we add a fourth cup of firmly packed brown sugar. Now, you're just gonna mix that around. <laughs> Okay, so the sugar has dissolved, and now, here come the pecans. So you take a cup of pecan halves, and you put that in there. And you're just going to, oopsie, mix the coat and add two tablespoons of bourbon. Yeah, there's bourbon at every step of this recipe. And then you're just gonna take it and put it over the pie. So you've got a, that nice sugar sauce with bourbon flavor in there, and here comes the show. And that is, you're going to take bourbon. We started with the fourth cup, used two tablespoons in that, so this is the remainder. I promise I'm not just, it, I really did measure it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it in a saucepan, and you're just gonna do it, you're not going to do it until it boils or anything. You're gonna do it until it, they say it gets fumes. Medium heat is for everything that uh, has been soaked hot today. Get a torch. Ta-da! And then I, I think they probably want you to do it on fire because see, it's kind of roasting the pecans a little bit and probably doing something lovely to the, the sugar and the top of the pie. So it's still kind of on fire. Mmm. It's just a beautiful medley of flavors here that all come together in the true spirit of Thanksgiving and Christmas. So if you'd like the recipe, I have it for you on my website, weekendswithwhitney.net. There's a special recipe section, and it's waiting there just for you. Quick, easy, delicious. Well, still to come on Weekends with Whitney. New intriguing places to spend a vacation or a staycation. Plus, the majestic white pelicans make their return to South Louisiana. After this. Maggio, the only way to go. Maggio Buick GMC. Your satisfaction's our specialty. We really deliver on Fault River here in New Roads. Small town atmosphere, legendary service for over 60 years. Maggio, the only way to go. Where to go, that's Welcome back to Weekends with Whitney. Well, I am in a place right here in the middle of Baton Rouge, but you would hardly know it. There are beautiful ponds, incredible woods around here. It is just a bit of utopia. And did you know you can stay in a place like this? It's part of Airbnb. Sarah just recently did it this year. And her place is incredible. And I'm not gonna say that every place is that magnificent but it is quite a treat. Let's go. This secluded gravel pathway through endless palmettos is the gateway to a unique overnight experience. 
the Palmetto House. It's tucked away along these tranquil, lush banks of Bayou Fountain. The entire house is handcrafted out of materials as old and original as the bayou itself. It's the creation of Rigsby Frederick and his wife, Sarah. The people that come are looking for a quintessential Louisiana experience. The irony is they were just going to construct a bridge here. It was simply to make a bridge over a natural slough back here and it got away from me. Now it bridges cultures and continents. Well, we've had two different families come from England. We've had um, a couple that the husband is from Singapore, the wife was from France. Um, Australians, I've had Canadians, people from Rio de Janeiro. All of those people and more have been here just this year when Sarah and Rigsby decided at the urging of friends to become part of the emerging world of Airbnb. Airbnb is an online um, selection of personal homes and properties for you to stay in as opposed to checking into a hotel. So it is people who have either a private room in their home or they have a guest house or something of that sort that they're renting out from their own personal property. It's a worldwide directory of places to stay around the world, from the ordinary to the extraordinary. Say you were going to New York. On Airbnb's website, you could find anything from a $16 small sofa to rent for the night in Brooklyn to a modern Manhattan penthouse for $850. Or you could choose something unusual, like this award-winning converted stable for $600 a night. In Mexico, you could rent a $22 hut or an $800 oceanfront mansion. You could sleep in an igloo in Alaska or a yacht in the UK. You could vacation in a wagon shed barn in England or along the water in Venice, Italy. You can choose an entire home or just a room. Yet nowhere will you find another place like this. Rigsby and two craftsmen built everything by hand. The wood is native and old, some a thousand years old, like this sinker cypress. It's all ancient material, so it just has to be acquired and then fabricated and then brought out here, then built with. They brought it through these wetlands with only a four-wheeler. And then this is lace wood. I made the door and then I split it in half. Okay, I love this pecking. Oh, I love that pecking too. The bathroom windows are sanded onyx. The shower, open and exotic. Rigsby made the staircase. And all the furniture. Well, Whitney, it was just all parts and pieces of the puzzle. One board, natural edge, and I was able to be able to do the baseboard and the headboard. And then one more board, I was able to do both sides. Upstairs, everything came over the side, too but it all had to be brought over the balcony with a four-wheeler and a winch, all the furnishings up here because it's tight. You know, it's all, the whole house is 620 feet, you know. It may be small in size, but it's huge on style, design, and originality. You can cloak yourself in nature on the upper balconies and never see another rooftop, but you will see alligators and more. Cougars, deer. Turkey, um, coyotes. It's a refuge, basically, for wildlife and humans. It's a sanctuary for your soul, with surprises like a sculpture garden and this sculpted pond. All Rigsby creations, too. It's always fun to be that special place, though, for someone. Just it captures hearts, minds, and imaginations. It's even captured the attention of the Discovery Channel this summer. 
it featured the Palmetto House on its show, Ultimate Homes. So that just makes me realize that we're, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing right now. Yeah. We're on the right path, we're doing this. It, obviously, people really like it. If the thought of staying with people you don't know or bringing them into your home is a bit unsettling, Sarah says Airbnb screens and verifies everyone, but she still gets the final say on whether a guest can stay. I pre-approve everyone, so I never have someone come that I don't know who they are before they're here. I communicate with them. There's lots of safety precautions that Airbnb takes. They also take 6% of your nightly rate in exchange for advertising and handling all of the financial transactions for you. It can be lucrative, bringing in anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand extra dollars a month. But Sarah says the real reward in sharing her world with others is she's rediscovered part of it herself. You grow up in the South and you just don't think that it's as unique as it really is. And this, having this and doing this and having people come from all over the world and all over the country just to experience this environment has given me a new appreciation for it. It is one of the quintessential luxurious stays, it's ecotourism. We like being the zen of Louisiana. Much like Uber has transformed transportation, Airbnb is transforming our destinations. Still ahead as Weekends with Whitney continues, we get up close and personal with the White Pelicans flying south for the winter, right after this. Atlas Foundation Repair, fixing your foundation problems for more than 30 years while preserving and protecting your trees. Thanks for starting your day with us here on Weekends with Whitney. Be sure to tune in next week. We explore the strange and mysterious underground tunnels in downtown Baton Rouge and nearby neighborhoods. And other than Huey Long, what else connects these secret passages only a few people even know about? And we'll also explore and take you into the locks of Louisiana. Until then, enjoy your week ahead. We leave you with one of my favorite fall arrivals, the white pelicans. Enjoy their beauty, splendor, and wonder. Yes, <laughs> thank you. It, it would be it would be Whitney it, <laughs> and Kim. Something it's a refuge basically for wildlife and humans, you know. Mm -hmm. And if that refuge calls for a child, then it has to have all its inoculations and, and a, uh, no, I'm teasing you. <laughs> Don't use that. No. Oh, I love it.